Now that we have um, removed some of the clutter away from the main, let's now concentrate on our constructors. Now there's one important thing to understand in Java is this reference. That means whenever you make a call to a constructor, the call is made by a particular instance of the class. And then you use that call to fill into that instance values. For example, when EMP1 calls employee, I put two values into the EMP1. When EMP2 calls employee with one parameter, I put these two values into EMP2. When EMP3 calls this, I put two values that I pass into ENP into those placeholders into EMP3. So if you notice, they are all calls that are very much dependent on who is calling. So Java uses the special thing called this. It's always there, but you don't have to write it in all situations. You only get to write it if I run into this problem. Let's say if I call my parameter exactly the same thing as my class property. So now they're named the same. So when I bring my mouse over here, what basically uh, happens is that the Java loses focus that there is a property called EMP ID. Since the local variable has the same name as the property, the local variable will now going to override the property. So my constructor can't see the property. So what basically is happening in this line is that constructor is understanding it like this. Bring the EMP ID, take its value, and dump it back into itself. That's all it's doing here. So in this situation, if I would like to differentiate between a class property and a local variable, I precede class property by the word this reference. Now if you notice, it has actually changed colors. It turned blue again. That shows that this is a class property, a instance property, non-static instance property. And the other one that's highlighted in gray, the EMP ID, which is on the right hand side, is the variable. So now it can differentiate between the two. So this is another thing in Java. So sometimes Java programmers to eliminate the usage of the names so that they don't have to remember gazillion names, they would do something like this. So they would name the properties the same as a variable, but they will precede the property by the word this. So if I now run this program, it will not gonna make any difference to the program. The program will still going to run exactly the same way. It's just the underlying mechanism, okay? One more thing that you will have noticed in this program is that each one of the constructor is pretty much doing the same thing. It takes employee ID and pay and assign them a value, either to the user or a hard-coded value. So we can also reduce the number of lines in a constructor and that is extremely helpful if I have lots of lines in constructor. And we use that by using a special reference called this. When this is written out in this form, it pretty much mean call a constructor. And based on the parameter list that you pass, for example, if I type 999, comma, 0, 0.0 that is automatically telling it to go ahead and call the constructor which receives one parameter of type int and another parameter of type double. So that basically is what it is getting as a source. So now as I get rid of these extra lines, now this error goes away because when you write a this reference, it has to be the only line in the body of the constructor. So now what it basically understand it is like this, that call the constructor, which can take two parameters, pass 999 as to be the value of the first parameter, and pass 0.0, .0 as to be the value of the second parameter. Similarly, I can come down here and do the exact same thing, okay? I can come down here and do exactly the same thing. However, what I'm gonna do now is, Instead of 
passing to hard-coded values, I will now going to pass the first one as a variable. The second one is a hard-coded value, okay? So now I have reduced the number of lines of code in each constructor, and also it doesn't matter which constructor you call, the call always gets forwarded to a constructor with two parameters. So that sort of kind of working as my master constructor and in the master constructor I will going to leave the code as it is. Well, I just came up with that terminology, the master term constructor. Java programmers don't really call it, but if they pick up on this term learning from me, you know, I'll be extremely proud of myself that I came up with a Java terminology. But anyway, so we will be now um, looking at running this program. And you will going to realize that as I run this program, the output still comes out to be the same. So all I did was reduce the clutter and minimize the number of lines of code and introduce code reusability. That is one of the main factors behind optic-oriented programming. Thank you for watching this part. We'll continue building this example. Thank you very much.